The NTFS file system contains a surprisingly flexible set of attributes that can lead to some interesting anti-forensic detections, like time stomping. If you've ever looked in the Windows System32 folder, you might have noticed that there are a ton of system binaries and different DLLs required for Windows to function properly. Now, because this directory is so critical and often seen as a legitimate place where things like executables and DLLs run from, attackers commonly like to hide their malware within this or other similar locations to sort of blend in with the noise. One of the problems for attackers here is that oftentimes the file modification date is going to stick out and really bubble that suspicious file up to the top of the list. Remember, we're always looking for anomalies, and so if we can identify a single file that appears much more recently added than most of the other system binaries, which were typically only modified when the operating system was installed, well, that can be a clear indicator for something we should look into. And so what attackers often do here is an anti-forensic technique called time stomping. This is where attackers modify the timestamps of files to make malicious activity appear less suspicious or to sort of blend in with legitimate files. Now we can run a simple PowerShell one-liner to roll back both the modified and creation date of the file using the Windows API. And in doing so, we can make the malware match a majority of these other files in the list. However, as an analyst, we still have techniques to detect time-stomping artifacts during an investigation. For example, when performing incident triage on this system, I collected the master file table or the MFT, which is like a big catalog that tracks metadata about all the different files and directories on an NTFS file system. And using a tool like MTFE CMD, I converted the master file table into a body file, which I can then use to create a timeline of all the activity across the file system. Now, I'm interested in this Mimikatz file, so I'll filter the data to pull back its records as they relate to different file system change events. However, under the meta column, we can see that all of these relate to 85085, which is this file's unique MFT record number. And so I'll copy that record number and head back to MFTE CMD to dump that record's details. And when we do that, we're going to see a number of attributes dumped out associated with this file. For example, we have standard info. From this attribute, we're getting the timestamps that Windows uses to categorize this file. For example, take a look under the created and modified timestamp. It looks like they've been rolled back a few days, interestingly with the remaining nine digits zeroed out, since that was a limitation with using the Windows API to roll back timestamps. This is an interesting indicator for us that something was modified here. It's extremely unlikely that the file would naturally have all nine trailing digits in the timestamp zeroed out. However, the file name attribute is an even bigger giveaway. This attribute contains its own set of timestamps, and file name time stomping is much harder to do and is unaffected by the Windows API. Because of this, we can see all of the original timestamps, once again giving the attack away. Now, if you enjoyed that and want to see some more, check out the TCM Security Academy.